Okay, good evening, folks. Call the uh, March 20th conservation meeting to order. Um, Paul, if you could read us in, please. All public hearings and meetings heard by the Random Conservation Commission on Wednesday, March 20th, 2019 at 5.30 p.m. in the Random Veterans Memorial Town Hall, Donald L. McKinnon Meeting Room, 558 South Main Street, Random Mass, are relative to filings and joint hearings and or meetings under Mass General Laws Chapter 131, Section 40, as amended, and the Town of Random Wetland Protection Bylaw. Thank you, Paul. Uh, just one announcement to start with that we're going to have to uh, keep all comments tonight kind of uh, short and to the point. We have to be out of here because there's another board coming in at 7 p.m. So, all right. Um, Wazoo. Uh, first one we're going to take on is um, Notice of Intent for Elm Street East, Map 2A-5, Francis McGrook. Is that right? Okay. Need the green cards on the tear sheet. Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, in the Town of Rainham Local Bylaw. The Rainham Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, March 20th at 5.30 p.m. in the Donald L. McKinnon Meeting Room of the Rainham Veterans Memorial Town Hall, 558 South Main Street, Rainham, Mass. On a notice of intent filed by Francis McGuirk, 30 Darrington Drive, Rainham, Mass, 02767. The applicant proposes construction of a single family dwelling and associated grading that would be located within 100 feet from a bordering vegetated wetland. The applicant also requires, <coughs> excuse me, the applicant also requires review and approval of a delineated vegetated wetland line and associated resource areas. The property is owned by Francis McGuirk and is located at Elm Street East, map 2A-5, Parcel B. Okay, thank you. Uh, did you just state your name, sir? Jonathan Pink. Okay, go ahead and start explaining. Okay. It's fairly simple. A single family home where you got involved with a bordering vegetated wetland part of the lot. Actually, borders on Lake Nip and Nicket. It's out of my reach here. But, uh, the dwelling is the pink here. This is a 100-foot buffer zone, so most of the dwelling is within the 100-foot buffer zone. At the closest point, it'll be 30 to 35 feet from the left, outside the 25-foot buffer zone, which is here. So down the side, we'd like to put just a, a stone driveway so he can gain access to the back. This is going to be a walkout. So, and that's pretty much it. Fairly simple. We, uh, well, we're in the um, natural habitat of endangered species, but they gave us the okay. Okay, we saw that. Azu? Yeah, the, um, uh, John, is the um, sewer gravity or uh, E1 pump? I'm sorry, Azu? The sewer, is that going to be the sewer service? Is that going to be E1 pump or gravity connection? Probably going to have to be forced. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the, the uh, it really doesn't change the project that much, but that flag of uh, 36 when I was up there didn't make much difference between 36, 37, 38. Uh, well, 39 is fine. So you probably want to go straight from. Uh, 36 to 39, but that doesn't really change much on the project. <coughs> um, and uh, you, this is not a septic system. We have to be worried about groundwater pollution. And they've got a lot of from natural heritage mm, saying it's okay. We saw that. Yeah, so there's nothing. Uh, but from the looks of it, it looks like it's going to be a 
lot of these. Yeah. Well, that was going to be my question. Yeah, yeah or in Bridgewater. So yeah, how does that work? Yeah. We haven't come across this. Do Oh, well, but the uh, wetlands is in the br in Bridgewater, but all the work is in wetlands. It's, it's, it's in Rainham. Rainham. Yeah, yeah. So really, our so only two flags are 34 yeah. and 35. So in the, yeah, so any butter that is in Bridgewater should have been notified, too. Okay. Yeah. Will they have to file in Bridgewater as well? Um, not really, because the uh, Bridgewater doesn't have a jurisdiction over Rainham. Because the actual construction is right. in Bridgewater. I mean, right. in Rainham, yeah. 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 <laughs> Anybody on the board have a question? Yeah. How much fill do you plan to put in? I don't think there's going to be much fill at all. Maybe some in the front of the house. But like I said, it's going to be a walkout, so there'll be some grading on the sides. Mm -hmm. But not a ton. You're not doing any fill within the wetland? You're not proposing any fill in the wetland? No, sir. Right to the town line. <laughs> Anybody else? Saltation fence. Kevin, anything? So, uh, the only question I have is I know Ozzy had said that most of the construction is in the Rainham side, uh, but I know the 25 foot no touch that's highlighted here in yellow goes into the Bridgewater side, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, is there going to be any grading going right up against the 25 foot no touch, or are we going to stay right at that siltation fence? It's going to follow the dotted line. Okay. So at that point, not really. I don't think there's any work in. Bridgewater proposed at all. I know it would only be like 10 to 20 feet, but I just want to I just wanted to confirm that the the dots that are there, which pretty much straddle the the, uh, the Raynham town line, that's going to be the limit of work. Right. Yes. Okay. Anybody else? No. Well, no. Anybody for the audience have any comments? Uh, go ahead. One at a time, ma'am. You have to go up to the mic and state your name and your address. <coughs> you can write. Oh, okay. Edna Reserve, uh, Elm Street East, Rainham. And I just want to look at the plan. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Get a comment, sir. If you want to go up and while she's looking at that, uh, Joe McCoy, 589 Elm Street East. Um, I've got a question concerning um, the amount of grading that's going to be done um, and uh, the potential for shedding <coughs> groundwater onto adjacent properties, 580 Elm Street East. Which would um, be to the where is that property located on the map, sir? I don't know. I, I can't see the map. It's right away. Oh, it's right over, as if you look at the proposed driveway, it will be the property to the right, which will be the south south side of the driveway, right by the street. Okay. Where it says there was Shirley, uh, in Nezrella. Nezrella? Yeah, okay. 580. Yeah. Oh, that's a front lot, okay, yep. Just to say your name, one of these. Yeah, Shirley Nezrella, 589 Elm Street East. Okay. This way. You we just have to direct the questions to the board. I know, but okay. I can't see the, the plan. The okay, we'll, we'll Kevin, can you take that and just turn it towards the audience, please? And, and the other question I have is, the, is, the, is the board um, concerned at all about, uh, is this the appropriate board to be concerned with for as far as screening from adjacent houses? No, that would be something that would go through planning. All we're, all we're here for is protection of the wetlands Protection Act. So, you know. That would be the planning board. Uh, Mr. Chairman, just a point of information, the, the, just so that under, if this is an existing lot, all they need is the order of conditions and the uh, building permit application. Okay, so. Okay, they're not creating a new lot. New okay. lot. So, if they're not creating a new lot, there's no, uh, they're, so they don't live here thinking that they will get a, a meeting with the planning, planning board. Okay. okay, all right, thank you. So, this hasn't been approved by the planning board yet, or? It doesn't need to be because it's a single family home, correct? Yes. And correct. on an existing lot. That is correct. So the lot the lot's already established from years back. It's already divided out and it's only a single family home that's going in there. So it does not meet the requirements to go before the 
the um, planning board. The planning board. You, you know, you. I suppose you could bring a question up to the building inspector. Yeah. Just the, the concern is about screening for, I mean, this is a house that's being built in the backyard of Shirley's house, okay, which is looking out on woods now. Right. And all of a sudden there's a new house going in. So there's a concern about screening, okay, and there's also a concern about um, there's been water in the basement before and the amount of grading that's being done mm -hmm. could shed more water onto her property and, um, <coughs> and uh, accentuate the problem that is there now. So we're concerned about the finished floor height um, and concerned about grading, concerned about screening. Yeah, the... Um, they're not about, uh, Mr. Chairman, if you look at the plan, <laughs> uh, right, they're not doing any work other than laying, <laughs> stripping this loom and putting in the driveway. They're not proposing any elevation changes. And that's yeah. why they're probably setting it all the way back there. Yeah. So they're not proposing any uh, elevation changes that will redirect the natural topography is going uh, from the west on the which is the street to the east okay. um so basically the mandate of the concom and then uh, as far as uh, 131 section 40 is concerned you also know that for single family uh, um, stormwater management is not part not of existent. the yeah. right right it's not a requirement so the impact would be how the impact on the wetlands that is the jurisdiction right. of the commission and you and they're showing that they're maintaining that minimum 25 feet but the elevation shows that it's going toward the wetland right it? that is correct so it's, it doesn't look like it's coming <coughs> right to the to the street it looks like it's all going to the wetland no for it to go to the street they have to bring a lot of fail to do that and that it wouldn't make that, the way it's it proposed it's going sense. towards the back yeah okay. thank you <coughs> anyone else have a Question? Go ahead, ma'am. Um, Sandra Smith Robbins, we actually live on Birch Hill Road, so we're in the butter in the back. And do I have the right? This is the McGuirk project, right? Yes. Okay, good. Glad I have it. So I, 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 I'm trying to figure out, maybe you can help me here. Where exactly are you planning to, to build? I mean, years ago, my understanding that this was approved for three house lots. I do not know that okay answer. all right so you're saying it's just going to be one house not three one one this, this project's for one okay all right because like i said we've been there for 25 years and so we know that there was originally this was they asked for five and then they got three so i just want to make one. sure it's only one. We'll say one and where is it in relation we'll to what one. i can see sure. this would be okay and this is the wetlands here it would be around here Okay. So I guess one of my concerns is is that right now, how our property goes, it goes down, and we get a lot, a lot of drainage. I mean, if you come there now, it's, it's I mean, it's up to here. Um, so I guess my concern is is that when you start to, I don't know the correct term, so I apologize if I sound foolish, but when you start to push, like you're saying, the, the sludge or whatever is going to go down towards the wetlands, that's where we are. So you're saying that the drainage is going to go into the wetlands mm -hmm. and that's well, acceptable so not sludge not, not, not yeah sludge, not right? sludge. Sludge. yeah no but, well, but you know right. when we say, say when we say run drainage off. right we're not talking surge or anything like that right. the natural runoff of the water on everybody's property right. will be directed away from the street towards the rear of the property all right and that's which where we are. filters <laughs> into <laughs> no you well What's behind them is all wetlands and Bridgewater, so you're not behind them directly. Yeah, we are. Well, then your house would be in the wetlands right here. We're not that far from the wetlands. Are you over here? Uh, I don't know. I have to ask my husband. He can look at this better than I can. I'm not sure. We're behind the wetlands up high, but what she means is when it slopes. Are you on the Brid Bridgewater side? Yes, we are. Okay. Mm -hmm. We get flooded out as it is. I mean, if you put more drainage down into the wetlands, it just floods us out more in the front. Yeah. Because that obviously I mean, the water comes around the back side there yeah. by the rainy and pumping station. What was your last name, sir? I'm just Ryan trying to Robbins, 33 Bridge Hill Road. Three. Yeah, we're in Bridgewater. So you're not going to find him. 
Well, there are some of the houses on this map on the Bridgewater side. Uh, there's an Anthony Oliveira on 35 Birch Hill, 37, and 39 is directly behind this. So I, I know you can't see it because the map's folded up right here, but 37, uh, 39 is right about here, yeah. and then 37, and then 38 is up here. So if you guys may be further up, then it's 35. 35. 35. 35. Oh, you guys are 35. No, we're 33. 33. <coughs> they're the next one over. Then the next one over still, yeah. So. They're close together now. Yeah, they, yeah, there's no room down there. <laughs> so what's the size of the uh, house being put up? It's just a num. All right. Uh, 35, 35, 35 by uh, 40, and then uh, the other wing will be your uh, 50 by where by the garages. So 35 by 40, and then a 50 by uh, 24. All right, so so 50 by 24. 50 by 24, call, call it. Yeah. That is the amount of land that's being displaced where this house is going so you're not talking surface area of runoff as a huge amount that's why it's a single family home and correct me if i'm wrong but it, we don't have to get stormwater management calculations because the the runoff from this project is minimal and doesn't meet the thresholds to expand it any further um, so if that helps you as far as them shedding water onto other properties, should be uh, it, it should be very minimal than what's already present. Um, I mean, we've had a historic amount of rain this year, so everybody's got to keep that in mind uh, in the last few months. So that helps. Go ahead. I just want to ask... Uh, Contractor question. So the natural slope is staying the same. The only thing that's being put into its into place is just a house. Right. But the natural slope that's already the there existingly the will stay continuous. So we're not adding any more material to the to the 10, 108 line. So we got 108 up here, and then it's naturally sloping already to begin with down. Right. So we're not changing any other elevations except for putting a house here. Correct. So on both sides of the house, the elevations will be what are there naturally currently right now yeah yeah because it's a walkout basement so the elevation should stay right around the you know roughly the hundred and the only uh, storm water we should be getting is from the roof yes and maybe some from this guy which is there right for us. stone is driveway stone it's gonna be stone though stone stone like when you say stone like three quarter inch gravel one inch yeah. gravel stone Impervious surface, so it'll absorb the groundwater. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah, but it's impervious, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. impervious, yeah. All right, any? Did I say wrong? Yeah. Oh. Go ahead, Mayor. Is it impervious? Yeah. Shirley Nasrallah, 580 Elm Street East. Um, will any of the natural wetland forestation remain? How much of it is going to be cleared? Which They're not touching there? anything in the wetlands. It's illegal. They can't. Yeah. Okay. So, ma'am, just so you know, we have uh, uh, here in town, we have a 25 foot no touch. Okay. So, this blue line is the wetland line here. And they have to stay at minimum, by our, our rules, 25 feet away from the wetland line. They can't do anything beyond this yellow line. Do anything. And is there any type of um, regulation that keeps the driveway away from the existing lots, other lots? Will the, there be, as far as I know, they can go over the lot line, but I don't think they want to do that. And that may be a question, ma'am, for uh, the building department. Okay. Right. Thank you. you can ask them, too. I think they're pretty, pretty good as 
far as it goes. It's not me. Okay. <coughs> okay. So who would that be directed to? Um, probably Ms. Benoble. Okay. Very good. Thank you. All right. Any further questions from the board? All right. Uh, would you like to close the hearing, sir? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, so we do have, uh, for the information, uh, we under the uh, town's local uh, bylaw, uh, town each permits may not be issued uh, because of outstanding taxes. So that will need to be addressed before the town can, before this board can. It's got outstanding taxes? Yeah. Yeah, we got a new a memorandum from the tr uh, collector and treasurer. So. No, because if you close it, then you have to okay. issue a decision within 21 yeah, days. Yes. Continue. Yeah, you have to continue. Okay. Yeah. So I didn't, I didn't realize that. So due to the outstanding tax issue, uh, we'll have to continue until that's cleared. All right. I know, I know you're the engineer, so you could just be the bearer of the bad news. Yeah, here. Mr. Oh, Will Pink. Let me make a copy. Oh, Sorry, help. All right, so uh, a motion to continue. I'll, uh, I'll make a motion to uh, continue the notice of intent for Elm Street Eats, map 2A-5-France, dash dash uh, yeah, France, oh, I can't even say it. McGorick? McGorick. All right, maybe I got it right. Um, Second. And that'll be continued to the, our next meeting. Um, um, I would suggest that we leave it open until... Well, Mr. Chairman, you can't leave oh, an open, yeah. can leave an op a meeting open and that. It has to be continued to time and date specific because you have an about us here, okay. and they cannot be re they're not going to be really notified. Them. Okay. So, you're gonna so our next continue. meeting, Mr. And if Chief. it's not done by then, then you have to continue it again. Our okay. next meeting is uh, April third, so I'll um, amend my motion to continue to April third's meeting. Okay. Second. Second. At five thirty. Five thirty p.m. in this room. All right. Motion been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. April 3rd, April 3rd, 5.30 here, um, it'll be continued, okay, thank you, if you folks want to look at that, could you just go out in the hall and kind of keep it down, Chairman, I, I don't know what you said, but you cleared the room. <laughs> I have that effect. Um, Ma'am, what are you here for? Uh, Riverwalk. Riverwalk. Okay. All right. We're going to do that next then. Sorry. I didn't know if you were waiting for something different. Okay. Uh, continued notice of intent for DEP file 269-0965, New State Highway, Church Street, Map 16, Parcel 55, Dan Andre, Rainham Riverwalk, LLC. Uh, good evening. Uh, for the record, Steve Gioso with SciTech, uh, representing the applicant this evening. Uh, with me tonight is Ryan Prophet, the applicant's uh, attorney on this project. Uh, this is a continued public hearing. Yeah, As yeah. the commission knows, we've been working on this now for several months. And uh, working with the other uh, boards, uh, agencies in town, and uh, we've also been going through a peer review process with the planning board's engineering consultant. And we wanted to, tonight we're not ready to move forward with the commission granting an approval or taking action on this plan tonight, uh, but we did want to not just continue the hearing for another meeting because we have made some significant changes and we wanted to at least get them onto the record <laughs> Uh, let you know which direction we're heading with the plan before we uh, ask for a continuance this evening. Um, so we have filed some revised drawings. These drawings reflect um, input from the town's uh, consultant, their engineering consultant, who is working with the planning board, JC Engineering. And if you remember when we made our initial presentation on this project towards the end of last year, uh, the applicant was proposing to go with porous pavement for the road design, the driveway designs, and, you know, it presented a lot of information to various people in town, and it's clear that even though he wanted to try and go with that type of low-impact 
design project it's kind of a new concept here in town it hasn't been used we thought it was a good application because it is a private development it would be privately maintained but it was clear that um, it was going to be difficult for us to continue in that vein uh, with that type of drainage mitigation so we took a step back we've modified the plans and we went to a more conventional pavement so we've eliminated the porous pavement from the application um, that forced us to look at other elements of the drainage design so that we can offset the drainage flows as well as create the water quality cleaning that is required uh, by uh, DEP and your regulations that you're enforcing and so we've added a series of storm scepter units to the uh, roadway drainage system we've added um, water quality swales sediment four bays and we've actually added a small detention basin on the plan and we've also eliminated one of the house lots and associated uh, driveway for the house lot because again when we started reworking some of these features of the design uh, it was clear we weren't going to be able to accommodate the extra lot so we've scaled the lot the project back by one lot um, as you know we did have a approved wetlands line the green you see on this drawing represents the delineation that uh, the Commission approved about a year ago uh, for this site and we've worked the design around that um, wetland system through the property um, coming into the site again just for orientation Route 44 at the top Church Street here closest to me we've got a roadway that will loop through and interconnect back to Church Street and then a small cul-de-sac road feeding off <coughs> the main subdivision road this is going to be a gated community, um, privately maintained, so all the roadways, all the drainage systems will be privately maintained. We have worked with the fire department on pavement widths, and we're trying to keep this as a low-impact project, so we've kind of kept the pavement widths uh, <coughs> as narrow as possible and still satisfy emergency access uh, requirements to the site. And so since the last plan you saw, um, these are the plan of profile sheets but the roadway here's route 44 again for orientation here's our main entrance coming in we've actually added a detention basin over here we've converted a number of the drainage structures in wall street the main drive for the project to storm septa units that's going to get us above our 80 percent tss removal uh, standard we've looked at the storm scepter sizing these will all be STC 900 units, which will get us to the proper uh, sediment removal requirements uh, for the project. But we're going to eliminate the porous pavement. Um, we know that there were some concerns about the storage reservoir under the pavement, construction, public works had some concerns about if they had to come into the development sometime in the future, there was a water main break digging up the road. They're not equipped to repair that type of pavement and so it would create some a little bit of headaches in that regard as well uh, so we think going to the more conventional pavement design and then adding in a series of water quality and stormwater controls we're still getting we've done a new analysis with our hydrocad we're still getting a reduction in peak flows so we're meeting the stormwater standards for reducing flows to at least existing levels and below um, it didn't change any of the um, locations of the roadways the roads and driveways are exactly as originally presented uh, on our initial plans and as I said we have added some additional systems to the plan we have refiled these plans not only with the Commission but with um, the planning board and their consultant their consultant has not had an opportunity to complete a review of our calculations and the mitigation measures we're proposing which is why we're not in a position this evening to look for uh, the project to be moved forward and we actually think that if uh, the Commission agrees a continuance for uh, to the second meeting in April would probably be the more appropriate uh, date to head towards it'll give you folks some time to take another a closer look at what we've uh, filed for revised documents, but it also give the planning boards consultant and the planning board time. They are meeting tomorrow night. We're going to have this same informal 
uh, presentation with them tomorrow night. <coughs> we're looking to that hearing to be continued as well. That'll again give them time to get their consultants report back, which we'll provide to you folks. And hopefully we are moving a little closer to a point where everybody can be comfortable to grant approvals. So that's kind of where we're at. Um, we're still trying to maintain the low impact approach. So we tried to keep grades to a minimum. We've added to the plan set grading around all the proposed units so that we can see the amount of land alteration. These are slab on grade units or no basement units, so we're not a need to raise them up. So we're, again, maintaining a low profile, again, to try and keep this a very low impact uh, style project. So uh, with that, I think that's where we're at at the moment, but we didn't want to just ask for a continuance and not give you a, a brief update uh, on where we're standing as of today. Okay. I just have one quick question. At the beginning, you said you eliminated a couple lots. We eliminated one lot. Their project was originally a 49, was 49 lot project. We're down to 48. I'm sorry. Which lot was it that you eliminated? It was actually right at the entry point. So originally, we had seven lots in this area here. We went down to six lots. So right as you're coming in off of Route 44, 44 okay. the f lots one through seven were revised to, um, to accommodate uh, one less lot. And again, when you look through the plans, you'll see there's an extensive landscaping plan for the entry points for the project, street trees along the road, all of the standard features you would see in a conventional subdivision, sidewalks. Would they be required to um, submit a notice of intent for each lot? Every new lot that is within the uh, jurisdiction. So, so you, at least so a dozen you write lots the order, You yeah. write in the order of 40 infrastructure development, the road, the storm water. Okay. And then any particular lot that is in your jurisdiction will require at least, uh, if they are maintaining at least 50 feet, then that would be a request for determination. If they are inside the 50 foot buffer, it would be okay. a notice of intent for that lot. For that lot. So, so when you write the order, uh, that's the same thing that you did on the other subdivision yep. where specifically said this order does not authorize uh, uh, construction of individual lots that are within your jurisdiction. Because you would want to see the grading, you want to see... Oh, just an eyeball. It looks like yeah. at least half of these are going to have to be... Right. No, yeah. and, and, and you'll see we, we're showing <coughs> footprints of houses on the grading plans now, but they're, again, they're concept <coughs> footprints, so the applicant has to select the final footprint. That's mm -hmm. going to make minor alterations. So that's why addressing lots as need be as we go forward. Yeah. Some of the lots won't have to come before you. Yeah. We've included their impervious area and lawn area in our calculations. Some of the lots won't fall in your jurisdiction. Some, as Azu indicated, would fall in the RDA category, and others may fall into the... <coughs> Full notice of intent category. Okay. <coughs> Anybody else have any questions? Mr. Chairman, I just have a comment. I was actually excited to see this new type of asphalt being used. I was very intrigued by it. I'm sad to see that it, the applicant's taken it away. Uh, I thought it would, it'd be something interesting for the town to actually see in action and see how it worked. Um, it's not that often. I think the closest place that the attorney had mentioned <coughs> it was Provincetown, uh, the last place. And I'm not going to travel to Provincetown to go look at the, <laughs> to go look at it. So uh, maybe something will come down the line again where uh, this type of asphalt will be used on a smaller scale, and we'll have something to go look at as a reference point. So the, the pushback was from the planning board on using that. We had that? a lot of pushback from planning, and so um, we think again it's a different <coughs> concept to wrap your head around. I think, and I think. We actually have another project coming up in town that I know the engineer who's working on it was <coughs> considering going with the um, porous pavement on that one. We've done a lot of research on it. I think it's an exciting option to consider. Nobody wants to, you know, have big detention basins and and on the costs and the and the eyesore associated with those. And if this works, and it has been in use yeah. since the 70s, um, Walden Pond. They have a visitor parking lot. They've used porous pavement there at their visitor parking lot since, the, I think, the late 70s. And I think they've I read an article. They just recently repaved it um, a few years back. And that's really the only major maintenance they've had to do on the parking lot. And they say it's because of their maintenance program. It has maintained the, the porous nature of the pavement. But again, it is new in this area. Um, so it's going to take a little while. But I think as the communities go forward, 
trying to get it so everybody can be comfortable with it in the right setting, I think it's a great idea to, to at least try and work it Isn't that what in. we have out here? You've got a form of porous no, pavement not, here. Not really. Not really. Okay. Not. Yeah, that's a that's an open block paver, which is a little <laughs> bit different design and maintenance <coughs> requirements. So. Um, because it's, you're talking a roadway that can require maintenance by the town yeah. of a private private yeah. project application yeah. Yeah. might be a little bit more palatable and it's going to have a lot more traffic right yeah than parking lot. right yeah right so I think the, there may be other applications that will come and everything up else and consider it. Look forward to seeing it. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Anybody else? No. Comments. Nope. So All right. So you want to continue to the second meeting? So then the question will continue to the second meeting in April. April? Yeah. yeah so you'd like to do I think the 17th is the second from meeting. Steve. Okay. Well, you have well, that for, yeah. We'll just have to have you fill out a uh, request. Okay. That's fine. Would you like that, uh, Mr. Chairman, in the form of a motion? Thank Please. You. I'll make a motion that we uh, continue to April 17th, the uh, continued notice of intent. The DEP file number 269-0965, New State Highway, Church Street, Map 16, Parcel 55, Dan Andrade, Riverwalk, LLC. You that? Second. <laughs> I have to take a breath. <laughs> Motion been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. I got a two six nine. <coughs> yeah, we'll put it in. Uh, we'll put okay. it in. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> All right, thank you very much. All right, thank you. All right, uh, next is an issuance of an order of conditions for DEP file. 269-0963, Route 24, Utility Crossing, Mass DOT. I'll make a motion that we, uh, we need to issue, right? Motion we need to issue. Yep. Right, we just closed. All right, so I'll make a motion we issue uh, amended order of conditions for DP file number 269-0963, Route 24, Utility Crossing, Mass DOT Project. Second. Second. Motion being seconded. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. That one there, one of those two where there, so much spending money filling an application. If you look at what they proposed on that uh, amended order, they could have come in here for a minor modification, minor, yeah. and then you would have just accepted the plan on record. And then you know, plan. instead of spending all this money in the ad and having the uh, people show, show up, uh, yeah, well, they are charged, but you're a tax dollar. I was going to say, our tax dollars. <laughs> right. There's a zoo again, putting the control. <laughs> Uh, next up is issuance of a determination of acapability, acapability. 35 Crimson, Sean Milmo. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we uh, issue the uh, determination of applicability, 35 Crimson Street, Sean Milano. Second. Motion remains second. All in favor? <coughs> Aye. Aye. Certificate for compliance for DEP file 269-0758, lot 5, Forge River Parkway, map 14, parcel 242-4. Uh, 
motion to issue a certificate of compliance, DP file number 2690758, lot 5, Forge River Parkway, map 14, partial 242-4. Second. Second. <coughs> motion been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All unanimous. We have to vote to issue as well, right? That's what you just did. We just did. This is the one that's cleaning up. An it's old cleaning file. up an old file. Yeah. 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 Uh, all right. Everybody get a chance to read the minutes from March sixth. Motion to accept. Second. Motion been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Uh, any bills, Gil? No bills. Oh, no bills. Correspondence. Well, the only correspondence that came in, Mr. Chairman, which I had not had an associate was, but um, 295 New State Highway yep. about the wall and stuff, mm -hmm. and we got the plan from the planning board. So I just want you to be aware, aware that it is here. Okay. And mm -hmm. I was going to take a look at it mm -hmm. the next You're time review it comes in. Okay. Um, site visits. Yes, sir. I went to uh, Bridge Street for the uh, um, where they have. And remember that where they were going to do a subdivision for a while there, and then they decided to do, do a single, single family, family house. Yeah. Yes, I went there. It's well, well maintained. They're respecting the wetlands, and uh, what they want to do, it's really they just want to notify us that it's outside the jurisdiction, and it really is. And uh, one, it's right at the hundred hundred foot line so I went down there and met with a young lady and I told her that oh, I will report on the commission that's all set so you can sign off on the building permit. Okay. What are they building? They put up a barn. Oh a barn. Okay. Yeah. They want, and they, then a horse corral. Yeah they want a stable permit. They want a stable okay. So they're gonna build a barn. Okay. And then um I went I met with the uh, a guy uh, the engineer from Graham Pedersen who's consultant for the uh, highway department uh, where they're proposing of pedestrian bridge on uh, well, White Street, right down by the oh, uh, yeah, pump, pump station, where, yeah. Uh, yeah, where, where they have the pump station there. Yeah. So th that bridge is actually going to be on a private property, not inside the layout <coughs> of the road. So the gentleman uh, that is giving us the, giving the town the easement also wants to repair the dam. So I told him you can't do that uh, without a uh, notice of intent. You can do the uh, footbridge with their uh, a request for determination because that basically that's not going to be much work in the wetlands. They're going to be going over the waterway. Uh, but the uh, dam, he said the owner said he never finished it. But uh, uh, if the town's going to do the bridge, uh, they have to allow him to repair his uh, dam and the stone walls because he claims that by building the pump station and the town has screwed up his property uh, such that he doesn't have any more frontage and he needs to have his frontage or the town is not going to do any more work. So I told him, and I, I have, uh, Ed Barkley, the highway department, that that doesn't really, any work will in that uh, pond will require notice of intent. But without the, the town would allow him right off way through, it's part of selectmen or responsibility. We, we don't get involved with rights yeah, no. of, of, uh, and what he will be compensated and all that stuff. That's not that's not part of conservation responsibility. Just for my own knowledge. If you're his, name is Fred, his name is Fred. Leroy. Yeah. Right. Fred, yeah. Okay. Leroy. Yeah, I remember, mm -hmm. yeah. He had a problem with Buffalo. Right. Yeah. It was all the way up to mm -hmm. uh, cut through road there. Same, goes right back to St. Yeah. Church. Um, if you repair a dam, does that have to go through the Army Corps of Engineering? It has to go to the, uh, the Department of Conservation and Recreation. Okay. Yeah. It does need work. He does, yeah. He said he started it, but he never finished it. Yeah. Because the town wouldn't let him. Right. Yeah, and of course, you were, he you were, was blasting the, uh, whoever was the agent before. Probably two people 
before this consultant. <laughs> 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 Two people removed, so I'm not na naming names, but I'm sure you know. <laughs> All right, uh, anything else? No, that's that's it. That's it. Yes, sorry. Right. And you got a yeah. You got an email from Gail about South Main Street. You're gonna go check on. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. All right. That's for them. All right. Anybody else have anything? No. Paul. Make my motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Meeting's over.